in the twilight hours of dawn, where the sun's first rays hesitated to pierce the dense canopy, an eerie stillness enveloped the misty forest. The trees, ancient and foreboding, stood as silent witnesses to the secrets that lay hidden in their shadows. It was in this solemn setting that the decrepit cabin lay, its history etched in every weathered plank and broken window, a relic of time forgotten. Within this somber backdrop, a young boy, no more than twelve, with eyes wide and hands trembling, encountered a cloaked figure. The figure, emerging like a phantom from the mist, extended a hand to reveal a small vial. Inside, a dark tincture swirled with an otherworldly essence, seeming to absorb the weak light around it. The boy, whose name was Ethan, had not always been so entwined with the mysteries of the forest. Once, he was just another child in the village, innocent and unburdened. But that was before the mockery and ridicule of his peers had driven him into the solitude of the woods, their cruel laughter echoing in his ears long after their words had faded. It was during one of his lonely wanderings that Ethan stumbled upon the gathering, a coven of shadowy figures, cloaked and hooded, their faces obscured, encircling a flickering fire. The air was thick with the scent of burning herbs, and their murmurs were like a strange, haunting melody. Ethan, hidden behind a thicket, watched with a mix of fear and curiosity. The tincture given to him by the cloaked figure marked the beginning of his transformation. In the days that followed, the once fearful and timid boy began to change. His eyes, which had once brimmed with tears, now gleamed with a hardening resolve. A smirk, subtle yet unsettling, began to replace the expression of fear that had once dominated his features. Back in the safety of the cabin, Ethan would often find his gaze drawn to the portrait of his mother. The painting, sinister in its appearance, portrayed a woman whose gaze was cold and unloving. Her stern features seemed to follow Ethan around the room, a constant reminder of the lack of warmth and affection in his life. As night fell and Ethan lay in his bed, the whispers began. They were inhuman, seductive, promising power and revenge. They spoke of a destiny far greater than the scorn and mockery he had endured. Ethan listened, torn between horror and a growing sense of empowerment. His sleep was plagued with nightmares, a chaotic blend of reality and hallucination. Dark omens, foreboding voices, and an oppressive sense of dread filled his dreams. Each night, the visions grew more vivid, more tormenting, weaving a tapestry of his deepest fears and darkest desires. Meanwhile, the village, nestled in the valley below, remained oblivious to the brewing storm. As dusk settled, the quaint cottages and cobblestone streets were bathed in a peaceful twilight. The villagers went about their evening routines, unaware of the darkness that was taking root in the heart of the forest. In this world of shadows and whispers, Ethan stood at the precipice of an unknown path. The tincture of shadows clasped tightly in his hand, a symbol of the power and vengeance that beckoned him. The forest, with its ancient secrets and hidden truths, waited patiently, a silent observer to the unfolding tale. It was nearly time for Ethan to enact his vengeance. As the story of Ethan unfolds, the once innocent boy, now a young man hardened by the trials of his past and the dark tincture's influence, finds himself ascending the creaky steps to the attic of the old cabin. The attic, dimly lit by the sliver of light from a lone window, is crammed with artifacts of a bygone era, 
each holding secrets of the ancient powers that once reigned over the forest. In the depths of the night, Ethan meets with the witches in a secluded glade, their figures barely visible in the moonlight. The plan they had been weaving together was now taking shape, a sinister plot fueled by revenge and dark magic. The air around them crackled with energy, a tangible sign of the forces at their command. Within the shadowed woods, a ghostly apparition appeared, its form transparent and chilling. The spectral figure, bound to the forest by ancient curses, served as a grim reminder of the dark path Ethan had chosen. Its presence was both a warning and a manifestation of the power that now coursed through the forest. Ethan, feeling a surge of energy within him, discovered his newfound powers. Dark energy flowed through his veins, a gift from the tincture of the witch's rituals. His hands crackled with this energy, illuminating the darkened corners of the attic, revealing hidden inscriptions on the artifacts that hinted at a power far beyond human understanding. A tense encounter with his mother in the cold, unloving home of his childhood marked a pivotal moment. Their meeting was silent, charged with years of unspoken recriminations and mutual hatred. Ethan's eyes, now pools of dark energy, met his mother's cold gaze, an unspoken challenge hanging between them. The story then shifts to the exterior of a modest colonial era house. This place, once a home filled with love and laughter, now stood as a symbol of betrayal. The house, belonging to Ethan's ex-wife, represented a life that could have been, now tainted by the choices Ethan had made. Under the light of a full moon, the witches gathered once more, performing a ritual that echoed through the night. Their chants in an ancient tongue summoned powers old as the earth itself, their shadows dancing wildly in the moonlight. In Ethan's presence, objects began to move of their own accord, hinting at his growing power. Books would fall from shelves without a breeze, candles would snuff out and relight, and doors would creak open as if an unseen force manipulated the physical world around him. Shadows in Ethan's room began to play across the walls unnaturally, as if alive. They twisted and turned, forming shapes that whispered of ancient evils and dark futures. These shadow plays became more frequent, a visual manifestation of the dark energy that Ethan now wielded. The face of a victim, eyes wide with terror, appeared in the shadows. They sensed an unseen presence, a predator in the dark. This fear, palpable and raw, fueled Ethan's resolve. It was a confirmation of his power, of his transformation from victim to avenger. Chaos erupted in the local newspaper office as papers flew through the air, caught in a supernatural storm. The event was a display of Ethan's growing influence, a message to those who had wronged him. The town, once oblivious to the darkness at its edge, now found itself caught in the grip of a power it could neither understand nor control. As Act Two closes, Ethan stands at the crossroads of vengeance and power, his humanity slipping further away with each passing moment. The dark tincture, once a symbol of potential salvation, now anchors him to a path from which there may be no return. shadow-laden corners of a sinister alley, flickering lanterns cast an unreliable light, setting the stage for a confrontation that would mark the beginning of Ethan's descent. The narrow passageway, suffocating in its closeness, became the witness to Ethan's first act of vengeance. His victims, once the bullies of his childhood, found themselves cornered, 
their mocking faces now twisted in fear. One by one, Ethan approached, his hands crackling with dark energy, their screams echoing off the stone walls as they were consumed by shadows, leaving nothing behind but a chilling silence. As Ethan emerged from the alley, his eyes, now glowing with a demonic light, revealed the depth of his corruption. The once innocent boy was no more, replaced by a being fueled by revenge and dark magic. His transformation was complete. He had fallen into darkness. A frantic chase ensued through the dense, dark forest. This time, Ethan was the hunter, his prey a former friend turned traitor. The trees blurred past as the chase escalated, the line between hunter and hunted forever blurred. The traitor, desperate and panting, stumbled through the underbrush, only to be caught by Ethan's relentless pursuit. The forest, a silent observer, watched as dark vines, summoned by Ethan's will, ensnared and choked the life from his betrayer. In the silence that followed, Ethan discovered an ancient grimoire hidden within the roots of an old oak. The book, bound in shadowy leather, fell open to reveal pages filled with forbidden knowledge. As he whispered the ancient spells, the air around him thickened, the forest itself holding its breath. A creeping fog began to envelop the village streets, a tangible manifestation of the horror that Ethan had unleashed. Nature itself seemed to recoil from the darkness that had descended upon the land. Villagers, their faces etched with fear, gathered in hushed groups, whispering of the cursed fog and the shadows that moved within it. Ethan's mind, a maelstrom of madness and power, began to fracture, revealing his psyche through hallucinatory visions. The air around him crackled with the energy of his unraveling sanity, distorting reality into a surreal landscape of terror. A flashback tore through the visions, revealing the pivotal moment of betrayal that had seeded Ethan's vengeance. His mother, cold and unloving, had turned him away, casting him into the arms of a cruel world. This betrayal, deep and scarring, was the genesis of his dark path. In a clearing bathed in moonlight, Ethan performed a ritualistic summoning, calling forth a demonic entity from the depths of the abyss. The ground shook as the air around him darkened, the boundaries between worlds blurring. The whispering winds carried the echoes of ancient spells, the trees swaying as if in communication with the dark energies Ethan wielded. Spectral figures summoned by his power danced in the moonlight, their movements a haunting blend of beauty and terror. With the night echoing his rage, Ethan unleashed his revenge upon those who had wronged him. His co-workers, his mother, each met their end in a symphony of screams and dark energy. His mother, confronted in the silence of her own home, was enveloped in darkness, her eyes reflecting the horror of her son's transformation before being extinguished. In the aftermath, Ethan stood before a haunted mirror, his reflection twisted, a sinister presence lurking within the glass. The man he had been was gone, replaced by a shadow of his former self. In the corner of the room, an old doll, its appearance disturbing and eyes eerily lifelike, watched Ethan's every move, a silent witness to his complete fall into darkness. As the blood moon rose, casting an ominous glow over the village, symbols began to appear mysteriously on the walls, each marking a victim of Ethan's wrath. The village, now a ghost of its former self, was left haunted, a place of sorrow and lost souls. Ethan, alone and consumed by the darkness he had unleashed, allowed the witches to lead him in the final sacrifice to Lucifer, completing his transformation. As he was consumed by the ritual fire, his spirit rose as the chief ghost, a spectral lord over the haunted village, controlling all whom he had condemned to this dark existence. The story ends with Ethan standing alone atop the village, now a realm of ghosts and shadows, a chilling testament to the price of revenge. The door to the sequel lies open, the haunted town waiting, a new chapter of horror ready to unfold under Ethan's ghostly reign.